Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to, um, to this webinar. It's a, a really great turnout, and I'm delighted to see that, uh, people from all corners of the industry, which is, which is fabulous. Um, I'd like to thank UKSTT for setting this up um, and putting us on this platform. Lynn, as always, has been absolutely marvelous and done a great job getting it all organized. Um, this is a joint production between not just UKSTT, but also Wessex and, um, and Cobus. Um, and Wessex, as you will come to see in a minute or two, are not only wonderful innovators, but they've been great uh, adopters of, uh, of Cobus over the years. And I hope that what you're going to get out of this is a sense of you know, what it is that has made Cobus and innovation generally so successful inside of Wessex. But rather than just hear it from me, I'm delighted to be able to tell you that Eddie Rant, um, Director of Construction, Engineering and Sustainable Delivery, uh, will be available to answer questions at the end of this uh, presentation, which will run for about 20 minutes or so. And during the course of that, if I could just ask that you, if you have any questions, use the Q&A facility. And at the end of the presentation, um, I will join, uh, have Eddie, at Irant and Simon Drain, Business Unit Director at Cobus, join to, to basically take your questions. Now, I'm well aware that many of you may not be aware of Cobus, but some of you will. And some of you may have even tried it before. Um, what, I, what I hope you're going to get a good sense from, from this presentation is um, if you have come up against some difficult pipes, the pipe from hell, let's say, and we all know what it is, um, I'm sure. Wessex have had the same issue also, but they've overcome that and they've marched on and they are now, I would say, prolific users of, of Cobus and other innovation. So hopefully you're gonna get a sense as to how that actually happened. Um, anyhow, the, the, the theme of it all is customer-focused innovation, putting the customer at the heart of innovation. And I think that is exactly what um, Wessex have done. And I hope I will be able to show you that in, in the coming few minutes. Moving on to the next chart, um, those of you who don't know, um, Cobus is a really simple uh, technique. And of course, simplicity is best, especially when it comes to activity in, in the field. Um, and very, from a very high level, I would tell you that first of all, we, we can work on service pipes up to 32 millimeters in outer diameter, um, up to 25 meters in length, but probably more likely 20 meters, depending on the, uh, the ground conditions. And Cobus, as a pipe pulling technique, will pull lead, steel, uh, PE, copper, pretty much anything. Uh, and that is either gas or water service pipes. So that's a very, very high level, uh, simplistic overview of, of what Cobus actually is and how it works. We have two machines. The first is the, the KPP 300, which is the original machine and the one which uh, Wessex have most of. Um, this is a, um, a unit with its own uh, power pack. It's modular, so it's easy to get around. And it's probably more appropriate for individual replacements here and there rather than a series uh, along a row. But as I say, it's modular, it's very portable. Um, and it, it's the one that's been around for, for longer. The second machine is the KPP 400, um, which is a, a unit that is mounted on the end of the um, excavator arm. It works off a mini excavator and it uses the hydraulics and power of that mini excavator. And one of the great advantages of this is it's very flexible. It can be dropped into the, um, uh, and maneuvered into the right position in, in the pit. It was originally um, put together um, to deal with steel pipes. And I can tell you now that this particular machine is literally all over the United States and Canada um, because of the, uh, the, the steel pipes that they come across over there and so on. One of the interesting features of the KPP 400 is that the spool that you can see there, and by the way, the safety cover has been removed just for, um, for visual purposes. The spool that you can see there um, actually, uh, the, the male part will drop off after the, the pipe has been pulled, allowing for easy removal of the pipe from, uh, from the spool and then simply reattaching the male part of the spool. 
So it's an, an, an innovation which has worked extremely well for us on the, on the KPP 400. Moving on, those are the two machines. Um, very briefly talking you through the process itself, quite simply, um, making two small excavations. Um, you can see here we're either side of a busy road. Typically that uh, excavation is gonna be something around about three quarters of a meter square um, because that's typically how deep the pipe is going to be. So pretty small excavations. Step two is obviously inserting our special pulling cable through the old pipe. Um, step three is actually attaching that um, cable once it comes out the other side onto uh, the spool on the, um, on the puller. Um, assemble the puller into the um, excavation pit and simply start pulling, which is uh, picture four. And then finally, um, removing the old pipe safely from off the spool. So it is a pretty straightforward operation. It, it end to end, once the, the cable is through, it's no more than a, a 10 or 15 minute operation to actually carry all that out. Um, so it, it is very quick and, and very easy. Um, moving on now to how Wessex have embraced um, the, the Cobus machine and the Cobus method. They bought the first um, KPP 300 in 2016. Between, in the course of uh, 2017, they bought a further five, and Eddie can speak to this later if you have any questions on it, but obviously this was particularly to be able to allocate them around the regions. And then I'm pleased to say that only very recently, they bought the first KPP 400, which is the second machine I showed you, uh, and that is particularly to uh, make it more straightforward and efficient to carry out multiple replacements, but in one street, but also to carry out steel replacements. Um, over the years, we estimate they've pulled around about 2000 pipes, but possibly more, including lead and, uh, and poly over the years. Each crew will replace on average about 12 pipes for, per week using um, the Cobus method. Um, and one of the things that we'll come back onto a little bit later is that there has been great collaboration between us and um, and the um, and Wessex in terms of making enhancements, maybe even if, it's, even if it's only process workarounds. But that I think is a fundamental thing that has underpinned the relationship and what has made Cobus so successful with Wessex Water. Now let's move on to innovation itself. Um, and I would suggest that there are five key behaviors of any good innovative organization. The first is that there is always a better way, i.e. not being happy with the convention or the status quo, always looking for something new and better. The second is looking to focus on customer needs. And sometimes those needs are perhaps relatively unstated, but they still may be very important to, to our customers. The third is collaboration and collaboration, I mean, not just internally, i.e. jumping out of the silos and working together, but also collaboration with other stakeholders, including us as a manufacturer. I think that is a critically important part of, of innovation and making it successful. The fourth, critically important, is the willingness to experiment and no fear of failure, because there will be difficult pipes sometimes and it will be marked up as a failure, but nevertheless, um, if you keep going and find a way to make it work, then that is clearly what has got Wessex into such a great position. And then finally, the whole idea of empowerment. And I think empowerment in the context of innovation is particularly important when it comes to empowerment at the coal face. And again, I believe, and Eddie can talk to this later, I believe that this is something that, that Wessex have done exceptionally well not just with Cobus, but with all their innovation activities. So looking to what are, what are the customer needs, and I, I don't think this is rocket science, um, and actually not many of them are unstated. Most of them, most of them are very loudly stated. First of all, they clearly want to see a minimization of leakage. Secondly, they want to see safe or, or, or have safe drinking water and, and 
Incidentally, that is one of the key drivers that has made us so successful in the United States with the whole lead health scare. Um, that is one of the, one of the big um, pushes behind the use of, uh, of Cobus and, and pipe replacement over there. In addition, when there is work to be done, they want to see a minimization of disruption, i.e. for the work to be done quickly and efficiently. And fourthly, I think there's a very important growing aspect of it all from a consumer and a, and a customer perspective, which is that they expect us collectively to actually respect the environment. So running a thread through from those needs through to how Wessex have actually operated, um, I would point to, to five key areas. First of all, they've taken the view that rather than multiple repairs on a pipe, they're actually going to change it once and for all. Um, and that minimizes the disruption to, to the consumer and obviously reduces. So as a result of all that, um, Wessex actually currently already have a no dig practice in practice of at least 90% and probably significantly higher. And that will only increase over the coming years. So um, how does COBUS fit into all of that? Well, first of all, we are undoubtedly faster than um, um, traditional trench method, probably three times faster. Um, the environmental, the positive environmental impact, which feeds back to consumer demand, customer demand, is there for all to see for Cobus. Obviously, insofar as the operation with Cobus is quicker, there is, there is a lower carbon footprint. But in addition to that, we remove the old pipe, let's say, unlike other trenchless methods. So we re remove the old pipe from the ground, reducing the, the congestion, and of course, that also has a positive impact in terms of uh, removal of lead from the ground. Um, we're cheaper. I've got something to show you in a minute or two on that. And obviously, we're less disruptive. So I hope that through customer needs, how Wessex have gone about this and on into Cobus, you can see a clear thread of logic running through as to why um, Wessex have been so such big supporters of Cobus. Um, looking at the financial side, just for a second, um, and this is, a, this is um, these are Wessex corroborated numbers of a typical road crossing, pretty much like the one you saw in the earlier pictures. And you can see here that you will typically get a 70% cost saving over and above traditional trench methods when using Cobus. And that ranges across labor, obviously, because it's quicker and a shorter time period, but also materials, far less reinstatement materials required when it comes to Cobus versus traditional open cut. And then finally, um, in terms of uh, the actual machinery cost, um, provided the Cobus machine is relatively regularly used, there is a very small cost per pull. And of course, um, that machine is pretty much indestructible so you can, you can spread that over five years or maybe even longer. So we typically, as I say, corroborated by Wessex, see a saving of somewhere in the region of 70%. And, and I think not just of the consumer or the customer benefits, there are multiple other stakeholders who get something out of this. And I, I won't go through each of these because some leakage uh, financial and lead safety have already been covered. But if you think about the health and safety and the environmental benefits and the boxes that they tick, uh, particularly with, with the regulator uh, and indeed with the general public, um, there are clear benefits there. Thinking, for example, of uh, from the employee's point of view, the guys at the coal face, um, not having or radically minimizing the possibility of a strike is great news for them, obviously. Um, picking another one, the environmental impact of the benefits that I've already uh, outlined to you, 
um, they are extremely beneficial towards the general public overall rather than just individual customers. So a lot of ticks in those boxes there. And I think that speaks to um, the, the, the benefits of, of Cobus and embracing innovation. So how, how has it actually been made to happen at the front line? And what I'm going to pick out here are, are two of the five behaviors that I talked about earlier on um, and, and how they have found their way to the front line when it comes to, to Wessex. Firstly, is that whole point about the willingness to experiment, the willingness to accept failure, learn from it, and that rapid iteration process that needs to take place. And secondly, it is the empowerment at the front line, the willingness to say to the crews, look, you know, you decide what is the best method when you get out there. We may have a policy of, you know, the first choice is Cobus, but you may decide, actually, no, we're going to do it another way. But you're empowered at the front line to make that decision on that particular occasion. And I think when you couple that with the, the idea that those crews are really thoroughly briefed, they, they buy into the concept. Um, so this new way of doing things is something that they're ready and willing to get familiar with. There has to be a positive can-do mindset at the front line as well. So again, something doesn't go quite right one time, um, maybe because it's, I don't know, half-inch lead, rocky ground, I don't know what, then that, that either give it another go and try and overcome it or go to the next job and, and regroup uh, and reload. And then I think another critical factor, and we know who they are and they know who they are inside Wessex, but there are real well-trained but champions of, of the process and the technique. And again, not just of Cobus, but of innovation generally at the front line who are, if you like, the, the, the flagship of, of the process. And then the final thing I would say is that there is a partnership with us as manufacturer to work with them, get on site, figure out ways that we can carry out some workarounds, maybe enhance process or even adapt the machinery in order to make it work even better. And that kind of partnership, I think, is, is really, really critical. So I'd like to finish with a couple of, um, of customer quotes, if I may. And this first one, <clears throat> many of you will know of Senexon. Um, these are obviously a, a massive corporation. They are significant customers of ours in, um, in North America, in Canada uh, specifically. They currently have five KPP 400s and they use them very, very regularly. And I won't read out the whole quote to you, but he's obviously a very senior guy inside that company. And his sign off line is, it's clear that this technology is a game changer in our industry and they've embraced it. And then coming across the Atlantic over here to um, the UK, obviously I, I can't um, give this entire webinar, and this is my second last chart, without putting a, a quote in there from, from Wessex um, who have very generously joined us on this platform. But I would, I would just read out that last line. It underlines our reputation as innovators in the challenge to raise standards in the sector. And um, in that respect, hats off to, to Wessex for um, being, being that way minded. Um, and I hope um, that I have been able to give you all a sense of what it is that's made the Wessex Cobus partnership in innovation successful um, and something perhaps um, to give you some food for thought. So with that, um, I am pretty much done and I will um, just pick up, if I may, um, welcome Eddie and Simon. Um, you can see them on your screen now. And I will pick up on, um, on any um, questions um, that we have here um, and I'll feed them out if I may, pass them on to you gentlemen. Um, perhaps Simon, if I could pass this first one to you, there is a question here. How do you treat the cut end of lead pipe at POI? Uh, well, in, in terms of replacing the, the lead pipe, uh, the whole of the lead pipe 
uh, is replaced to either to the boundary box at the boundary of the uh, um, of the property, or it's uh, to the entry to the property. Um, now, I, I'm I'm not sure, and Eddie may be able to elaborate on this as to whether or not uh, the lead pipe is actually replaced all the way through to the internal stop tap. But generally, if not, it would be replaced. It would be the lead pipe would be cut at the point of entry, and then a uh, a standard lead to PE connector used. Uh, if, if that's what you're referring to, um, I don't know if there's uh, if there's a other treatment methods that are used uh, on the, the cut end of the lead. Uh, Eddie may have, uh, have, a, have a little more information on that. No, I think it's just a, yeah, we do take it right up to the, uh, the wall of the property. Um, so we're going, we're doing the customer's um, pipe as well as the uh, company pipe. And effectively, yeah, it's a clean cut um, on the wall and just yeah, we are using a, a lead to sort of PE connector at that point, and I think that uh, there's no other treatment at that to the end of the lead pipe. Okay, thank you, gents. Um, another one here, also an anonymous one. Always nervous of those ones. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Eddie, I'm going to pass this one your way. Since you are only partially replacing to POI, what are post replacement WQ sample results at the internal tap? Yeah, that's yeah, water quality sample results. So effectively, we you know, ideally you'd replace all the lead in the property, um, but we're through our our process, we believe we replace enough of it to get the sample result down to a uh, the required level. And so we take samples before and after. We've got very um, we've got very tight numbers, and that process does achieve the, uh, the results we require. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have one more question. So if any, we're gonna get this answered, but if anybody else has any other questions, then please, please fire them in now um, in the course of this one being answered. I'm gonna give this to, to, to Simon. Um, it's from Katrina Flavel, by the way. And uh, the question is, is the pulling cable treated as a consumable? In fact, maybe both of you could answer this one. Simon first. Yeah, uh, the uh, the pulling cable uh, is is single use, um, and it and it would be treated as a consumable. Uh, so it's it's a consumable cost that has to be taken into account in the in the overall cost of using the puller. Okay, Eddie, do you want to to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think as we We've used it more and more. We know where you are going to struggle. Sometimes the cable will snap if you're trying to go across it onto a reinforced road, for example. So actually we, we know the point in time is where we're going to use where, where it should work. I think our teams are aware of that. But yeah, we use, it is consumable. And obviously, uh, but it's uh, from, from an economic point of view, it's well worth the money. Maybe I could ask you a question, Eddie, because the, the Q&As have been dealt with now. Is there a sense, how do you feel about this idea of, of championing and, and, and the importance of that to get innovation adopted within your, 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 your typical MO? What, what, how, how does that work? Um, I think it's, it's, well, it's probably part of more of a cultural thing, I think. It's the, uh, we've got, it's the team members that are very passionate about it and they, uh, as with all things, they'll, they'll find, and find ways of, of making it work and getting over situations. Um, for us, we've got a 9,000 lead pipes to replace this amp. And, and we've got some multiple um, property um, leakage areas for service pipes. So I think the teams are looking at it when, and it is part of our, you know, one of the options we've got, we've got a number of options, but you know, COBUS is something that we've, uh, you know, we're very keen on. And I think, um, you know, the teams have found ways of, of getting the most out of it. Okay, understood. Um, Simon, you, you have got a couple of questions, I think, on the chat, oh, as okay. well as in the Q&A. Okay, okay. Um, can you see them, Simon? Yeah? Yeah. So okay. uh, one why, of do the you, why do you ask and answer? Yeah, one, one of the questions um, 
is can the pulling cable be reused? Um, the, our recommendation is that the pulling cable is single use, um, just purely because as each time it is used and gets wrapped around the, the, the spool, uh, some of the fibers will start to, to crack uh, and which will weaken it. And therefore, if you use it on a further pull or pulls, um, then you will increase the likelihood that that cable could break and, and would leave you with a bigger problem um, than if you just reuse the cable. Uh, most customers who are using the Cobus pipe puller and use our cable uh, accept this. They use the, the cable once uh, and they treat it as a consumable cost. And when they look at the overall cost saving compared to just, for example, the cost of reinstatement alone, then the cost of the consumable is, is a fraction of that. Okay, super. Uh, the other question comes from our so kind of Scandinavian uh, colleagues up uh, in Norway. Um, will this panel be available to make an exclusive presentation to some chosen members of the Scandinavian Society of Trenchless Technology? Well, I'm sure Simon, from Cobus's point of view, we can affirm that we would certainly be available to do that. Um, uh, whether or not Eddie- yeah, or I'll be happy, happy, to, happy to join in. Yeah. So I, on that note, I think that it, I see the questions, and I think we've we've covered them uh, now. Um, what I would say, just just briefly, since you mentioned our, our Scandinavian friends, we do have people on this call, not just from the UK, but actually from uh, from Scandinavia, um, from from Spain, from Italy, and several other overseas markets. So hopefully, this will help to to spread the message there. Um, I, I will say this before closing, um, Eddie generously offered to um, uh, provide an opportunity for people to come and witness Cobus being used um, on a, a site, a Wessex site. Obviously we have to be careful of numbers and, and social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. And the timing may have to be carefully chosen, but, but that as an offer is there, Eddie, is that correct? Yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Um, with that, um, it's 11.30 now. Um, we, will, um, we will call it a day, but thank you very much for your time and your attention. Any questions, obviously um, you've got uh, contact details there, um, either to myself or we can pass them on to Eddie. Um, and thank you very much for your time and attention.